So season two wraps up in a couple of days, but over the last two months or so that we've had of season two, how's it been? Today, I wanna to take a look at my review of season two, the things that bothered me about it and a critical analysis of the things we were given in terms of content and the upkeep and support or potentially lack thereof that we saw over the course of the following weeks after launch. So as we go along with your thoughts down below, what did you guys think of season two? Did you like it? Did you think it was underwhelming? Wherever it lies with you, let me know. As well, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so from a single thing running all things Warzone, Cold War, anything regarding season three, we got you covered here because there's a lot coming in the next few days. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button. We're on that road to 400,000 subscribers. And if you want to join the community, I'd love to have you. But said, let's jump into the review of season two. So right up front, what's the verdict for me on the season? Well, I think it kind of depends on the day, how much I've played and how much of that goes then to frustrate me. If I'm incredibly frustrated after gaming and I don't have any time to cool off, where I've absolutely lost full, I'll say worst season we've ever had. On a good day, I'll still say terribly disappointing because it's undeniable in my mind that this season just felt like filler and in a lot of cases didn't offer a ton to players. On the Cold War side of things here, that premium experience, we ended up getting six new weapons, which on paper, yes, that's nice. But then we ended up seeing four new operators, 100 tiers of the battle pass, as always, a new score streak, outbreak, and the real kicker to me, three multiplayer maps all season, only one of which was 6v6. And I'll be totally honest with you, I almost forgot it was a part of season two because it has been so long since we had an introduction of a new map. Operator and weapon wise, that sounds fine again in theory, but it didn't really fill any gaps in terms of excitement periods. There wasn't really any time outside of the mid season or the launch where I was just like, man, I'm excited to see what they add into here because there wasn't really anything on offer. But again, that's still such a bummer to me in terms of that MP offering for maps in particular. I mean, I understand up front for the initial launch roadmap, maybe you withhold some things that you don't want to spoil as secrets come over the course of the next two months or so. Like in season one, that roadmap didn't showcase that we'd get Express coming in the final two weeks, but we ended up getting that. So adding another map onto the existing handful that we already knew of for season one. And the side by sides even with season one versus season two stuff is actually kind of mind blowing to me. Now, there's a few asterisks here at this. Yes, but like it's still kind of wild in my opinion to see this kind of change. Season one had eight maps listed on the roadmap, four of which, yes, were for gunfight in that introduction. There were only 2v2, but then we had the Pines, Raid, and Nuketown Holiday were 6v6 as well with Sanatorium coming later on down the line. Weapon offerings detailed in season one were lower, but equaled out to be about the same with melee weapons that came over the course of time as well. Warzone in season one got a whole new map in Rebirth Island, but whenever we come back to season two, the biggest thing here that we saw was Outbreak, which don't get me wrong, that's a phenomenal phenomenal experience to be introduced, and I love that Zombies has taken that leap of faith in a greater development to make something like this a large-scale world of zombies, but Season 2 in particular for Cold War fans, I just genuinely feel bad for those that really want to stick around with traditional MPs offering. And normally, I'm sure that we'd hear things like, well, we just saw that time and energy put into Warzone, but I'll be honest with you, I'd argue even with that because season two of Warzone was to me straight up filler to kill time. Now, I'm sure that if I really thought about it, I could say more about Cold War. I do apologize if there's not much review of that point. I'll be totally honest with you. I just don't quite enjoy Cold War's MP this year and it's not my jam. So I'm not playing a whole ton of it. I'm still over on Warzone for the majority of my time. So that's where a lot of my own reflection for the season can come from. But let's talk about what was introduced with season two in Warzone. At launch, we had the new ship of the Vodianoi, which wasn't a whole lot to experience outside of day one, to be honest with you. I remember dropping in hot. Everybody landed there the first day or two. But outside of that, it's not in a great location positionally. Rotations aren't great out of it and there's no real extra added incentive like zombies crates to collect there anymore. So for me, the last seven weeks, I've had zero reason to go there and I haven't since week one in terms of landing there. I've had to sometimes rotate towards it if there's a prison end zone and I gotta try and stay out of the line of sight from somebody at top spire, but outside of that, I'm not there at all. We also saw the introduction of those silos and their containment protocol consoles, which is a really cool thing narratively, but again, outside of going and checking the upped containment status, I haven't gone there really since launch of the season. It is a decent strat, I guess, if you end up wanting to land there and get some free cash, but that's just not the way I play normally. But that was what was added in in terms of new offerings. But in fact, we saw things that were removed from Warzone with this season as well. Things like the bunkers were closed off, the parking level and underground levels of stadium were sealed off, as were the subway stations, which lasted minimal time. I mean, season six entire main introduction and storyline focus were on that subway system, and they lasted for only two seasons before they were closed off. Now, I'd argue that we'd actually even 
maybe even lost more content that we gained in playable area with season two in Warzone. As for that zombies event, outbreak event that beginning part was kind of cool just to get some free loot out of it and everything but we're talking about the grand overall zombie spread i'm not sure what i'm more disappointed with when it comes to warzone the lack of changes that we saw regarding the meta or other things that we'll talk about in a second or that zombies outbreak that zombies event so here's the thing to preface this because otherwise it might just sound like mindless complaining and i mean maybe it still does but after some context who knows but the logic behind that irritation is that we had all this build up pre-season 2 of something in relation to the nuke happening. It was hinted at in the game files even after the fact that Price stopped Zakaev's launch attempt of the nuke to start World War 3 in that cutscene. I think it was season 6 or season 1, like right before or right after Cold War launched. And immediately after the launch of season 2, we had an overabundance of items introduced into the files that indicated a plague mode was coming. By all indications, this looked to be incredibly cool because it pointed to a genuine overrun of zombies zombies in Warzone and the map there, and it made for a really cool reason why we'd see a nuke event actually happen, why a nuke would go off to eradicate the zombies from Verdansk, the sort of last-ditch effort to save humanity, I guess, maybe, but whatever was planned after that, it was a nice narrative setup and pretty cool. The only problem, literally nothing ever came of that. That has not been something we've seen just yet. Now, maybe this was our fault for getting our excitement up too high, but we had that prospect as well as that containment level spreading and getting higher with it starting at 5% at the start of the season when it was just the Vodianoi. And logically, that made sense to see the progression up and up and up in terms of percentage increase because there's 20 named locations in the map. Seeing only one of them overrun by zombies at launch, that's 5% of 20. So it made sense to think, okay, it'll spread until we need to see that nuke introduced in place. Turns out that wasn't the case either. Instead, we got a weekly changeover of one zombie's location for almost two months instead of a progressive buildup to the point where you'd need to nuke the map. Only until this last week did we see something progress a little faster and a little more rapidly than we had all season, with the only things being introduced are those radiation zones at the Vodianoi or Shipwreck, Prison, and Hospital. There may be more since, but I'll be totally honest with you, I haven't heard anything and admittedly haven't been on at all. I'm just not in the mood to deal with the meta of weapons the last few days, but we finally saw some progressive or more rapid spread here of this in which this final week of season two sees more locations being infected or I guess radioactive than just one introduced a week or shifting a week. Instead, it's actually compounding and going up. So here's the thing. We do know that we're going to be getting something on the 21st, but at the same time, we don't have any clue what this will be for. I want to say that it's the nuke event prefaced by that plague mode finally coming into play but we just don't know. And the fact that it took two months for anything to happen, that's the frustrating part to me. And like, listen, I understand that dev is a pain in the ass, and I understand that you're the biggest FPS game in the world, that you need to make sure you need to go through a ton of channels and checks to make sure everything's good and all that. But when you call this season the end begins in the marketing and then don't do anything for almost two months, you're gonna lose a lot of people's interest. So I'm optimistic that this final few days can redeem it, but I'm just still frustrated to think about all the lost potential that we saw over the last seven weeks or so. Meta-wise, it was the FFAR AUG M16 the entire way. To be honest with you, I am amazed that a meta lasted a full two months, that it was the entire season and we saw absolutely zero change-ups to knock the clearly dominant weapons down any pegs. And instead of knocking them out, actually, we even got a weapon added into that level of sheer absurdity with a Psykov. We had two air quote weapon nerfs to the AUG, but everything else really stayed almost exactly the same. The ADS time on the FFAR didn't really hinder any of the main problems that that weapon had. The AUG still has a ridiculous TTK. The M16 was the kind of little brother to the AUG, which had a damage drop off where the AUG did not. So when you introduce it, it's still just as viable, but it's just kind of amazing to me. And like, listen, I know it's easy to say, oh, but you are new, use those weapons in your gameplays, to which first, I've tried incredibly hard the last few weeks not to. I'm just incredibly bored of it. Most of the gameplay that is actually new and recorded within the last couple of days to weeks is like a CR56 AMAX or MAC-10 gameplay or something like that. A lot of what gets edited into the videos is gameplay that is from ages ago, that I just have a huge stockpile of footage I'm trying to use up and clear off my hard drives. But even if I were, that's the thing though. I fully realize this meta is so bad, but when you play in statistically speaking top tier lobbies in the world, thanks to how skill-based matchmaking works, pre-closure of SBMM Warzone, that site that would grade your lobbies, 
all of mine were diamond tier. When you get to those levels, you quite literally cannot use anything else if you want to compete, get kills, and win. Because you're playing other people who are exactly like that and use those weapons because statistically speaking, you don't have an edge over anybody else you're competing with unless you use those weapons. So it's a terrible rabbit hole that takes this around 100 weapons in the armory choice and turns it into only three to five. And it's just boring. The meta this season was all burst weapons. TTKs, as we talked about in a video two days ago or so, I think, there are four to five weapons that have TTKs under 500 milliseconds with armor. So that to me is just a glorified large scale TDM. Weapon changes needed to come and they needed to come sooner. And again, coming back to it, we mentioned that it kind of feels weird because again, there is that light at the end of the tunnel. I kind of feel bad cutting up on all this that we know that there is changes being made, but at the same time, I'm just frustrated looking back. But moving forward, we do have a bit of hope because we mentioned that Raven said they'll be having significant tuning passes to that FFAR, AUG, M16, Psychov, and others. But it's just, again, frustrating. It's taken a whole season to get these changes made. Also, things like the Rose skin being adjusted as well. That's something that has lasted way too long as well, with community outcry being something that is absolutely heard on those levels of development that they know it's a problem. I just wish it would have been something taken care of within this season. Now, as for what's next, I have no idea. I just hope that whatever we end up getting, if it's a new map with season three, they do some major changes to the approach of how they play the game. One thing that I personally hope with a new map, I am so tired of dying to one-way entries that still persist in Warzone. And when I talk about things like that, I mean like rooftops that's incredibly easy to watch one doorway, one angle that you can't push up from really anywhere else. Or if there's two even, it's still in quads incredibly easy because it's two versus one going through a doorway or up a zip line. And when I think about places like this, I mean, almost all of downtown is wild in terms of one-way entries for buildings and rooftops. Watch one ladder, one doorway, a zip line, you've got zero chance. Especially Especially on zip lines, because I mean, you have no health immunity, but the animation doesn't let you get into the fight for a whole second after actually being up on their level. So you are defenseless for that entire second. But a lot of places don't even let you zip line. Downtown in particular, almost all of those three story buildings that have courtyards with that orangish shingled rooftop and one ladder entry, that's the only way up, one lone ladder. Bank building rooftop, only doorways to that roof. Capital rooftop, that's only accessible by jumping from skyscraper or ground war D apps, the two main skyscrapers within downtown. Broadcast that antenna building, only way up is the staircase. Two easy ways to watch that point of entry. The apartment building by E apps and ground war, only way up is through either the elevator, which takes you to the level right below the roof, and you still have to funnel through one doorway. The glass apartment buildings across from fire station in the soccer field, that only has one ladder up, and that's only downtown. ATC at airport, why is that even in the game? You have one way of that zip line up, which again, you just watch that zip line and you have an entire second of immunity where a player can't shoot back. Airport apartment buildings, there's only stairwells there. These buildings are copy and pasted in numerous areas around the map. So it's not only limited to apartment buildings, top block, you have those stairwells and then one zip line, which again is just an incredibly hard push. Top hospital, you can zip up to the secondary ledge, but not the very top, which again is just incredible easy to pick off. Hotel across from Superstore, Prison Spires, the port buildings with the blue rooftops, Inverdance Port, Block 15 south of Karst, Block 5 northwest of Stadium, TV Station Rooftop, that's only accessible by one ladder, the green two to three story buildings in the airport maintenance areas by police station, and I mean, need I go on? I absolutely could, but I think you get the point here with that. Map design, I think, within the current level of Verdansk has not been changed or adjusted near enough, and I hope with Season 3, if we do get a new map, those problems are taken care of. Ghost, I absolutely hope there's something done with this here in the future because I don't think you should be protected against a triple UAV to air quote advance it. At least show us a dot. It doesn't need to be any real-time carrot markers like the non-ghosted players have. And also the fact that players are hidden when they're not moving. That's again, ridiculous. Rose and all other dark uniformed operators should have identifying lights on their shoulders. Weapon TTK should be adjusted and never introduced to go as low as it does. I don't know, man. I just hope that with season three, a new map, whatever comes next, there's more hands-on communication for one, 
Two, changes that don't make us wait for two months to see anything of significant value adjusted. And then three, transparency. I just hope that there's, again, some communication, something they're telling us, okay, we know this is a problem. These are gonna be adjusted in a future update. So just be open with the community, have a little bit more timely manner in getting those things across. And I think a lot of people will have a lot better of a time. But I don't know, man, that might just be me completely ranting, raving here, whatever it may be. I've been frustrated here since season two's launch, really, when I look at some of the states of the game that we've played through. And again, I'm just kind of amazed that we haven't really seen much of anything introduced from content wise comparatively, and also then changes in upkeep throughout the last two months. So maybe again, this last week here is something these last final few days redeems it, makes up for it. Maybe this nuke event is the craziest thing we've ever seen and the coolest thing that is absolutely perfect for Warzone. And season three brings along a lot of stuff with Cold War content, whatever it is, we don't know. But for the time being, looking back, I just wish there was more done without so much dead time. But that's where we're at here, I guess, with it. That's my review of season two. Let me know down below. I know this isn't really our normal commentary, but I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you get subscribed to so a single thing running all things Warzone, Cold War, and anything COD related. Season three, again, I'm optimistic, but we got a lot of stuff here to talk about over the course of the next coming days. So make sure you guys subscribe if you have not done so already. If you also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get kind of on YouTube. Frankly, on both those, if you guys are struggling with conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. But said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.